How can you take a photograph that you thought was trash and turn it into a work of art? One way is with a path blur effect. Here's how it works. This particular photo was one that I did for a family for their a photo shoot that they had. And most of the photos were really, really great. This one, okay, it's an okay photo. But I think we can take this and turn it into something a little bit more artistic. And here's a way to do that. So we have this open in Lightroom right now. I'm gonna right click on the photo and say edit in Photoshop. Photoshop is going to open the photo. We did another video on path blur to create an artistic photograph and I'll put that link here. This one is one that we can use maybe for a client shoot that you just have some photos that you just feel like could have been better or you have a person and you just wanna create some art. People love to be part of art. And so if we can take a photograph of a person or a client and present them with a piece of art with them in it. They love that. It's a cool, cool little experience to give them. So here we have this photo open in Photoshop. The first thing I like to do is just click that background layer so that this is unlocked so that we are free to edit as we wish. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to move up here to our object selection tool. We're going to click our object selection tool and we're gonna select our object. In this case, it's this person walking on the beach. So we're gonna select the person. Photoshop is gonna determine what to select there. And then once it does that, there we go, we're gonna hit Command-C to copy, and then we're gonna hit Command-V to paste. You can see that it added a layer here. We're gonna turn off that layer and you see when we do when we turn off the layer, the person is still there, obviously, because layer one is an exact copy of what's already there. So we need to remove the person now. So we're gonna make sure that the layer with the person is selected. So that's layer zero in this case. And we can remove the person any way you choose. Now that Photoshop has this um, remove tool, it makes it super easy. So we can just select our remove tool and then paint over the area that we would like to remove from the photograph. And just like that, Photoshop is going to say, boom, she gone. Okay, Rad. So now that person is gone. We have our layer zero selected. This is, we're going to go up to our path blur function. So we're going to go up into the filter section on top, into the blur gallery, into path blur. And then we're going to take our arrow and just, we're just going to draw the direction that we want that blur to go. We're just going to keep it completely horizontal in this case, just to match the, the horizontal nature of the photograph and the waves. Now in the section on the right here, we have this speed segment here. It's a 50% speed. We can increase that all the way up to 500%. And it just gives that really ethereal blur to the photograph. I'm gonna leave it here at 500% just because I think it's cool. You can do whatever you want. You can take it down to 50%, 500% or anywhere in between. You can play with it and see what you might like. Once you are somewhere you like, just push okay. And then Photoshop will make that change on the photograph. Okay, there it is. And so now that Photoshop has blurred the background portion of our photograph, we need to put our person back in it. And to do that, all we do is select layer one again, push the little box that's empty so it turns on the eyeball and pushes that, uh, that person back into the scene. So now we have the person back in the scene, but there's a problem. And that problem is the person doesn't have a shadow. Kind of looks like she's just floating there. And that's not good. So there are a couple of ways to add a shadow and I'll show you both of them. You can kind of determine what's best for your particular case. In this case, I want to put an actual shadow on her and so I'm going to go down to the effects tools. I'm going to click that and I'm going to go down to drop shadow. And that is going to bring up this screen that lets us customize our drop shadow. And I mean, we can leave it exactly as it is. Opacity angle isn't relevant at this point. Size, we'll just leave it where it is. I don't think there's a whole lot we need to change in this one. And we're just going to hit okay. And it's going to create a drop shadow. Here's where it gets kind of cool, is you can select your drop shadow, right click on it, and then turn it into its own layer. We're gonna create layer from that shadow. And we're just gonna click okay here, cause that's fine. 
now we have a separate layer that is only that shadow. Now from there, we want to obviously have the shadow underneath her. So we need to go up to the edit function and then select free transform. So now we can have that shadow and move it however we want. The first thing we want to do is just flip it upside down, but it's a shadow, <laughs> and then move it into place. And we can, you know, whatever feels like it's going to feel right. We want that shadow to touch the bottom of her feet so that it looks somewhat natural. Push enter. And we have something like that. So now we have our blurred background, we have our person back in place, and we have a shadow. The shadow still looks a little off, right? Because it's, it's, I don't know, it just, it didn't look quite like that on the actual photograph. And here it just looks a little bit out of place still. So a way around that is I might add a layer mask to the drop shadow layer. So we just click down here on the layer mask, which then creates that mask. And then we can go over here to our gradient tool, select gradient, and make sure that we're in basics. And I think this is the one that we want to be in. And then we can just select, we want, we want to take that shadow and just make it more of a gradient from top to bottom so that it's not quite so harsh. So we'll just select the top of that shadow, pull a line down, and you can see that that has created a gradient of that shadow where it takes away that harsh end at the bottom. It just kind of fades it away into the photograph, which I think looks much, much better. So then we end up with something like this, which is still artistic. You know, it's not recreating an actual shadow. It's just recreating the effect of what this art might look like. But I think we have a piece here that the client would be really happy to have instead of just a, you know, a fairly boring shot of a person walking on a beach, which is fine. It's a beautiful shot, but we can turn it into an abstract piece of art with our client featured as the main subject of that art. And that's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool thing to offer. Okay, let's say that we don't want that kind of shadow in there. Let's turn that one off. This is also artistic, so it's not supposed to look like an actual shadow, but sometimes people like this. So this is a good thing to use um, if you want to create more of a reflection than a shadow. Maybe you have a, a, a boat in the water or you just want to create a, a reflection and not an actual shadow. So then we're just gonna, we're gonna duplicate our layer. So then we, we're gonna have two of those. We're gonna select our, our layer one copy and then we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna do edit. We're going to do free transform. We're going to flip her over. We're going to move her into place. So here we have what looks like a reflection of the person, but then we don't want just exactly the same. We want to move that opacity down. So it looks more like a, more like a reflection might look. So then it might look something like this, which looks good. And then we can do, that same trick. So we'll just select the layer that that reflection is on, select layer mask, select our gradient tool, and then just do the same thing. Just like so. And then we have a reflection, which probably looks better than that shadow did in this case. So I probably will leave it there. I think that looks, that looks pretty darn good. So we've taken a photograph that was decent and turned it into a nice piece of art for the client. And then once you're happy with it, uh, there's a couple that we can uh, select all of these layers, right click and flatten the image, discard hidden layers, yes. And then we simply close it in Photoshop, hit save, and it's gonna reopen it in Lightroom as this saved photograph that we can then further process if we like or export as a JPEG and send it off to the client to see what they think because they are gonna love it. So there you go. Did you have some fun? Did you learn something? I hope you did. Uh, it's always fun to experiment with this kind of stuff and play and learn and, and uh, I love to do this kind of work for clients and just for myself when I'm creating art. It's a ton of fun. I hope you'll subscribe. If you haven't, I hope you'll leave a comment. If you did learn something, I'd love to learn more about what you do and how this might apply to what you do. I hope you'll stick around. We have a lot more videos coming, a lot more fun to be had, and I hope you will join me for it. All right, thank you. See you next time. Okay, I'm gonna come on here again <laughs> and uh, 
convey how important it is to flip that reflection horizontally. So this is what it looks like after it's been flipped. So once you're, you have your layer selected and you go to edit free transform, it'll bring up this little, little menu here and you can just like flip it with this. Um, this is how it looked before and you can just see, here I'll zoom in, you can just see that the, you know, it's messed up, it's, it's backwards, the feet are wrong. So, so once we go back into free transform again and just flip it, there we go. That's how it's supposed to look. Much, much better. So don't forget that step of flipping horizontally.